All right, everybody, what are y'all doing? I am fixing to be to where I can just kind of. So. I went to Huntsville today and had lunch with one of my most favorite people in this world. So there was that. All right, you guys. So here's the deal. I have not been live lately and I have really just been super, super busy. And I just don't want to really make excuses other than we went to the stockyards the other night and did all of the photos and videos of those horses. And um, we got in at like, I don't know, two or three in the morning. Later than that, I think. And um, then the next day we kind of videoed horses around the house. And it's just been a lot. Like it's just, it's it's been a lot. And as most of you guys know, I've kind of been on more of a self-discovery type journey lately. And it's something that has really been important to me. Um, it's something that I really felt like at 35 years old and sometimes even at night, like feeling like, you know, like maybe something's missing in my life, that it was important for me to really take time and explore that. And I have, and I, I can sense a lot of change coming on. I really love I love what I do. I just want to do it in a very different way. And sometimes it's hard. Change is hard. But the one thing that I can tell you is, is I've grown my business to pretty much, I don't, I don't want to say that I've grown it like to the biggest that I can grow that aspect of my business and I kind of feel like I've become complacent. And unfortunately, when you have OCD and ADHD and all the other things that I have actually been diagnosed with, um, it's very hard. It's hard, to, it's hard to be comfortable in a place of complacency. Um, it's the same reason that I didn't stay in Okmulgee, Oklahoma. I could have built a business there, but it was very, I mean, it was complacent. Like I grew up there and I just remember always feeling like I wanted to move beyond that. So anyway, I, um, I've really been taking a lot of time to, and I've spent a lot of time by myself again lately. And that's been really good. You know, there was a long stretch of time in Louisiana to where, um, Jacob was gone all the time to sales. And especially before I had Tinley and even after I had Tinley. So then it was just, it was me and Violet. And then after I had Tinley, you know, then it was me and Tinley. But I spent a lot, a lot of stretch of time by myself. And I got very comfortable with myself and kind of knowing who I am. And the thoughts and ideas that I had as I started to kind of build what I wanted, um, they changed, you know, like it changed from being satisfied to not being satisfied and of course when you're not satisfied in your current reality you um you have two choices I mean either you can um, remain complacent or you can do something about it so I'm just really trying to stay off social media and I'm sorry, I don't want anybody to think that like I've gone anywhere, like we still have horses available. I'm still going to be advertising them. I'm just currently taking a little bit of time, like, and to be honest, I'm probably the happiest I've been in a long time. And and I really am doing a lot of great, fun, cool stuff. And I'm just I not having to put all of it. Hang on, you guys. Hello, this is Tara. Yes. Uh, did you I'm sorry? Where are you located? In New Summerfield? New Summerfield. Yes, ma'am. What is that by? Can you give me a big town? It's by Hood. It's between Henderson and Jacksonville. No, oh, between Henderson and Jacksonville. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Well, I have a son in law that was looking for a horse. So um, that's the reason yes, I'm asking to see where you're located. No problem. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. 
So, anyway. It's kind of funny because there's been a million times that I'm like, man, I should go live. Or, man, I should post this. Or, man, and I just haven't. I just have kind of just been living my life. And it's been really... It's been really good to just kind of live my life a little bit off of social media. Like, no offense, but none of you guys have a fucking clue what's going on in my life. And nobody, I mean, anything that could be said online right now would be such a guess. Because nobody even knows. Like, nobody has a fucking clue. And people only get to know the very little bits that I snap or that I mention. And outside of that, nobody has any idea what's going on in my life. And truthfully, it's been a really good lesson for me to learn to kind of take my power back. In that I don't, like, the world doesn't have to know every aspect of my life. Like, it's, and that's been nice. But, um, I will say that I just have, I'm at a crossroads in my life currently. And I can go left or right. And I've always been the person that I preach to people to go with your gut instinct. Don't follow your heart. That bitch is toxic. <laughs> Don't follow your heart. Do you hear me? That bitch will get you in a bind. So just follow your gut instinct. Like where... You know what I'm saying? Like follow where your guts tell you to... Like, you know, your gut instinct hardly ever does you dirty. So that's been my thing. Is like just really trying to set the emotional aspects of... Like, your brain and your heart get to telling you that you should do this. And no, that's... And at the end of the day, I've just been offline. And I've just been really sitting with myself. Um, and just making sure that I... As I approach this crossroad, that I just make the best decision for me long term. And for the first time in my life, I can actually say that I'm kind of basing this on... What is best for Tara? Not what's best for anybody else. Not what anybody else wants me to do. And um, I've, I will tell you that as I approached this crossroads, I really had um, an immediate instinct. Like, hey, this is like this is right, and it like that's like go, like that's a but. But sometimes in life when you get to that point and you're telling yourself, like, go, this is it, that decision doesn't just affect you. You know, it ha there's other people in that moment that have, um, like, I guess, a role in it or have a say-so in it or have. And that's when things start to really get tricky at the end of the day is because if your gut instinct is telling you, like, this is a good idea, that, that like, the gates open go and you you jock for that gate you know what I'm saying and like you're headed but you turn around and everybody else is still just standing it it makes you hesitate even though your gut instinct is telling you like that's right like this is your journey and you need to go left and you need to go left hard and fast but everybody else is still just standing looking down the path to the right and you can't help but wonder, like, am I missing something? Like, am I, is there something I'm not seeing? But sometimes it's not that. Sometimes it's just that some of us, me especially, kind of forge our own paths. Like, when I started the Kill Penry homing thing 10 years ago, nobody did that. That wasn't something, it was almost 11 years. Nobody else did that. So when I had that instinct and I went, like, nobody else was looking at that open gate. Everybody was still looking at just going to auctions. And so I know that the smart thing to do, there just went a load of like 10 gray horses and they are skinny as fuck. And the uh, horse trader slash like animal person in me wants to flip this Jeep around and chase the stock trailer down and be like, sir, sell me your skinny gray nags. They need fed. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not even kidding you. Like everything inside of me wants to like chase that. Sorry, I'm not kidding. But anyway, I, uh, so anyway, for the first time, I've just, I just have taken a step back and I'm just really evaluating my future. I'm 35. I've really started down the spiritual journey path and I've just, you know, there's been so much 
And it's like, I knew, like I started work walking that path a long time ago just to try to control my anxiety and to figure out, you know, because at the end of the day when I really started like trying to understand like my unhappiness and, um, and this has been a while ago, I started to realize that a lot of my anxiety and depression are not clinical, they're situational, they're circumstantial. And um, there's a difference. And so for me, controlling my anxiety and depression really, um, it's not easy, but I have the right tools to do it because mine is situational and mine is circumstantial, it's not clinical. So it's hard too because I think there's people in this world that maybe theirs is more of a clinical issue than a situational issue. And I try to approach things in my life from a situational standpoint. Like, I think you feel that way because of the situation you're in and you need to get out of that situation. But it's not that easy for people that theirs is maybe clinical. So, um, with that being said, I just, I just have been quiet. And I'm spending a lot of time alone and just really remembering where I've been and who I am without the influence of anyone else, without the influence of, and I'm a team player. I'm very much so a build, build an, build an empire around a tribe. And, um, for the last 10 years I've really built, you know, I've really built and hustled and and I've done it, and unfortunately, sometimes I, I do think that Jacob and I just don't align in that way. I think that there's a lot of there's a lot of things in life that we just don't align on, and um, I've been very open about the fact that since October, I have been having this just feeling that like what what is meant for me and like what what lies before me is just something really different, just a real radical change. And, and even though maybe to the public, it might not seem radical or, you know, but for me, just the way that we've always done things and to be complacent in that is no longer comfortable. And, um, I just, you know, have really, really been craving human connection. And I know that that sounds really strange coming from me because I'm such an introvert. Like, I don't want anybody to touch me. My best friend has been my best friend for almost 20 years and she's a hugger. And she will tell you that um, for the first 18 years of our relationship, I cringe when she hugs me. Hate it. You know, she just hugged me and I just, and take it just fucking take it and um you know it started before I had COVID and having COVID made it worse and it's just steadily getting worse to where I don't know that some of that was not a little bit trauma based and that's okay but maybe I'm not as introverted as I thought I was maybe I'm not maybe I don't dislike people as much as I think that I do I think I actually really like people and I think I was always just very afraid of rejection and just very afraid to get close to people because I had gotten close to people, you know, and people change, people die, things happen, you know, and I think I'm just now healing enough that like some of that is subsiding to where I, I just really crave connection, just a true connection. And it's hard when you start down that path of spirituality and you start to realize what true connection is and what it can really feel like you crave that but there's not a lot of people in this world that um that are genuine good people that that kind of can offer that and I'll tell you that one of my very best friends and I will love this person forever um lives kind of down here and it's Desmond he rides my colts for me and I met him today for lunch and man you know, the conversation that we had over lunch today was just, it was good. And he's just one of those people that he's such a team player in life. And I've never met anybody that doesn't have anything but great things to say about him. And he's just been somebody that's been really good for me to stand kind of in, like, to, like, own it. Like, just, just stand on it. Like, own it. <laughs> like, if that's who you are, own it. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. So, Anyway, I take a lot from my conversations with him and just his energy. He's great. 
you know, and Jackie's been fantastic. You guys know that she's just, she's an incredible individual. And Jackie is a lot like me that she's just spent a lot of time around people that have, um, been bad, you know, and just a little bit toxic. And it's been good because her and I both are on a very similar spiritual like where we are in our journey is very similar and it's been good because it gives you that daily reminder of hey like we need to do our stretching hey the breathing hey the yoga hey the it's a full moon you know it's nice to have somebody right there in your space that's constantly also reminding you that it's you know hey by the way there's like a full moon you know we need to call back what's ours like it's a you know, oh, the new moon is coming. It's time to really, you know, like it's just been a very positive because not all of us have a spiritual friend right there in our space constantly to kind of encourage and keep us down that path. And I can tell you that she's been a blessing because it's very easy in my line of work and the people that I surround myself with in the horse industry, they can be toxic. They can be toxic and they can be people that don't really have your best interest and they can be people that can come to you and approach you in a standpoint of, um, oh, you think that they're really kind and it's really great and then you find out real quick you're being used, you know. So it's been, um, but it's been good to have somebody directly in my space that is on a spiritual journey, that is a team player, that is going to love me beyond kind of their responsibility because she does. She's fantastic. And, um. And Tylen was very good that way. Like he was very good that way. Maybe not quite as far down the spiritual like journey, but like he is, and like I got a notification earlier or whatever on Nebula, like an app for whatever, like he was on there or whatever. And, um, you know, so it's been, it's been good because I've kind of watched people kind of come into my life that just kind of are the change that I had been craving like just enough change that I had kind of been craving that to kind of give me just enough just enough solid solidarity in that to not veer off the spiritual path like to not veer off the higher vibrational like learning how to connect to my higher self to learn that traditional religion is a great thing and God is amazing but there's a lot more to it than what is just taught right right in front of you in church type thing. So it's been, it's been great, but I just want to explain that to you guys. So you guys don't think that there's anything wrong or it's just, I'm in a great place. I'm in a great space. I'm just, um, currently really trying to be diligent about, um, just making the right decision from here forward because I don't, I don't want to make, um, I don't want to make any hasty decisions that are like, like life altering, but that is what's coming. I mean, the decisions that are upon me are, are very much so life changing. Like they're, they are, um, they are very much so radically life changing. But at the end of the day, when you sit with that and you feel excited and not scared or hurt or I've lost a tremendous amount of weight. So just so you guys know, I um, would love to tell you that there was a secret to this. Like, oh, I, I found this magic pill or um, Heather McGee pulled a hormonal panel on me kind of to straighten up my, my acne um, and didn't really find the reason for that. Um, honest to God, my, my weight loss has genuinely just been a shift in my paradigm. Um, I have no excuse. I have nothing to sell you. I wish I had a magic pill that I could sell you to lose 30 pounds in 30 days and feel amazing and that your happy came back. Uh, but I don't because I could be so wealthy. But what I can tell you is, is that it did come from um, just meditating every day, uh, learning to pray correctly learning to really have connection with source and with God and to send those prayers. Um, I called back to me what was mine. I cleared a lot of negative and started to transmute it. Um, I went through Reiki courses. Um, I go tomorrow to have a, my, my first, since I've had my full Reiki attunement, I go tomorrow to kind of um, meet, meet Tori and kind of share that. She, you know, is a third level Reiki master. Um, 
my eating habits, I wouldn't say have changed much. I will say that I crave better food, but all in all, um, yeah, no, it's literally just been a paradigm shift and my health and my, I, my, my mom, my whole family, nobody's thick. No, my dad's mom. And you know, that, that was a mindset thing. Like my dad's mom was real short and real heavy set. And, and my dad's whole life, my, my nanny was kind of a hypochondriac. And I can tell you guys, like from, from me, she genuinely was a hypochondriac. Like I can tell you because I lived with her and like you got Tylenol and Benadryl for everything every day. Oh, and it was always like, Oh, the allergies and Oh. Um, and so I loved my nanny, but she, I think a lot of her weight gain was, um, I remember that she kept being convinced that her thyroid had gone out and the doctor kept telling her that her thyroid was fine, but she was just gaining more and more and more and more weight and telling everybody her thyroid had gone out. And anyway, I just, you know, um, but I remember like one time when I was younger, my dad saying that like, Oh, her, everything is just in her head. And I was like, oh, that's so mean, you know, like, but now that I had gotten really thick and got, I mean, I, I had gotten kind of fat and kind of stayed fat, you know, and really didn't have a whole lot of excuse for it. I can just tell you that a lot of mine has just been shifting that paradigm back to nobody else in my family. Like, I don't have to accept that just because my dad's mom was five foot, you know, maybe four eleven or five foot and 300 pounds. Like, that's not where I'm headed. Like, what, like, what is that? Do you know what I mean? Like, what is that? That's like, that's not a real thing. So anyway, I, uh, yeah. So anyway, I just, you know, I don't know. I just feel like, I don't know. But I will just say that there's just a lot, you know, I've, I've thought about it. I mean, um, my parents, my dad is kind of semi retiring. He's cutting way back. You guys have probably noticed that he put, um, a lot of, a lot of their horses for sale. He's only going to keep a handful. And my dad has also put their place for sale. Um, you know, so, so anyway, my dad, my dad and mom are just getting older and Tinley's been up there and, um, you know, I go back and forth on, on that. My mom is hoping maybe dad will want to buy a place closer to mine and we can, you know, I can see my family a whole lot more and, uh, but yeah, you know, and, and as I, as I look back over the last 10 years, I can remember things that I wanted and things that I really, and, and like, it just didn't happen because I just didn't have, have that control. Like, especially when I quit training racehorses and I went to Pitkin and I was rehoming the kill pen horses. I really didn't have a lot of control, you know, like, um, I didn't own the horses and I didn't own the place. And, you know, I really had just forfeited a lot of the control over to where I just did what I was told. I just did what I was told. And I just, and I believe it or not, as bold and brave as you guys see me online, the truth is, is in my private life. And even with my friends around me, I know this is kind of funny and it's, but I'm, I'm actually pretty submissive. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm always trying to like the people around me. I always do more for the people around me than I do for myself. And, um, and you guys have seen that with my staff. Like when they leave, they can say whatever they want to genuinely about me, like that I'm such a bad person, but you guys have witnessed for the last year and a half, all the gifts and the kindness. And I mean, I just pour love and life into the people around me. And I've always been that person, but I just am in a position now to where I'm ready to just really take back control of my destiny, of my future, of the way that I want to do things. And I just, I'm just going to be really honest, you guys, I don't want a business partner. I don't want, I mean, what this means for Jacob and I in the future, I don't know. Um, right now it's just, we're just holding space for the unknown because right now we're not, we're not mad. We're not fighting. We're not, it's nothing like that. It's just that where I currently am is just not going to continue down the path that we've been on. So, um, what that means for my future is I'm not completely sure what that means. And as long as we can be very, very civilized and just be, I mean, obviously we have a daughter. Um, we have been in a relationship, 
uh, nearly 11 years. So at that point, um, there's an immense amount of respect. You guys know that we've lost everything. We've overcome that. Um, we overcame Jacob, you know, going through all the stuff he did, his felony. Um, we went to Louisiana. We overcame being st kind of stuck there because it was free and we didn't have the money to be anywhere else. And so we kind of had to utilize the setup there and utilize that and then just be at, at the mercy, for lack of better words, of other people because it was their property and it was their kind of their way or no way. And um, coming to Texas, it was kind of like I came here and I felt like this was something I did for me to kind of take back control. And then as time has kind of gone on, I've, I've realized like, um, this just isn't, this just isn't really where, this just isn't really exactly where I want to be. Um, I, I mean, I like my facility. I like what I do for a living. I just, think maybe I want to do things a little differently um, but what that means I'm not sure because like I said I mean there will there will be a moment that I'm like that's the open gate go you know what I'm saying like my lips are so dry because for whatever reason I didn't drink any water this morning until like it was like I think 11 or maybe noon before I got some water in me and I'm telling you I'm on my one two three I'm on my fourth bottle of water and I still feel, I still feel dehydrated. But I've normally had half a gallon of water by 3 o'clock, you know, or maybe over half a gallon of water by 3 o'clock. So for me, it's, uh, I'm behind on the curve. And I can tell because the inside of my lips are so freaking dry. And that's another thing, you guys, is that... Um, yeah, so anyway, I went to a natural herbalist not very long ago, and uh, she put us, um, even Jackie, on Z-Binder. I don't know if you guys have heard of that. It's not expensive, but it's zeolite, and it's a natural, just kind of pulls all the heavy metals out of you. Y'all, I probably was on Z-Binder like four or five days, and I started having like the worst heavy metal like taste in my mouth that you could ever imagine. And, like, just having all kinds of, like, weird, like, detox symptoms. And, anyway, I think I just had, like, a whole lot of heavy metals. If you've ever been to a natural herbalist, you might want to try it. Because it wasn't really something that I needed. And I haven't, it didn't spark any more or less weight. So, please don't think, it, oh, well, maybe that's about the weight loss. No. But I will say that I think that my mental clarity is much better. Like, um, the one thing that I've learned lately is it doesn't matter what emotion sparks me. One thing my therapist, you know, I go to a natural, uh, She, I mean, she's a psychiatrist, but she does everything naturally. So, you know, you have to separate everything from pride, your pride, your ego, you know, you have anger, you have all these emotions. And above all of that is your higher self. And with your higher self, it can kind of see everything. And so what... I've really focused on lately is okay right now how I feel is XYZ so like right now I feel a little bit overwhelmed um, why because of the change that I sense coming and how does that you know how does the change the change makes me feel overwhelmed and the anxiety comes because it, my brain just reverts back to the flight like fight or flight um, but I, then I just have to remind myself that change is such a great thing because you cannot grow to a bigger level. You can't meet new people. You can't build new relationships. You can't um, have better. You can't do all of the things that you want to do if you stay exactly where you are and don't allow change to take you to greater places. So that's the hard part is we all fear the unknown. We all fear the unknown. And I never really have. You know, I had always just kind of been willing to go. Like if, but it was at somebody else's push, you know. Like if somebody else would be like, Tara, you need it. And I'd be like, got it, can do it. I have a hard time leading. 
believe it or not. I know that that sounds really crazy to a lot of you guys online because you know how strong I am and you know just how, you know how, thank you, Heather. My virtual assistant is watching this and thank you. I, I appreciate the compliment because I absolutely, absolutely love the people around me and I try my best. Yep, Z binder. So it's zeolite. It's actually zeolite and then it's got that, it's got the, on here it says Prima V, but a but Prima V is actually that, it's a um, S-H-I-L, it's like a mushroom. It's got a mushroom extract in it. Anyway, point being, back to what I was saying. Um, <laughs> sorry, I just, some of the comments just popped in. Um, you know, I really have... I have overcome a lot and yeah, I mean, yeah, but so, so in my real like intimate relationships with the people around me, and I mean this like with friends and everything, believe it or not, I'm actually not always the alpha and I'm actually not always the one that is like leading. Like I just know how to work. Like the thing about me is I know how to get up at sunup and I know how to work till two in the morning and then like sleep in my Jeep so that I can like get up the next morning and be right there and do it again. Like none of that intimidates me like that. Like I'm not too bougie for that. Like I'm not too good for that. Like that is something that I can, you can hook me. You can absolutely hook me to the wagon and I'm going to pull. So, um, of course I've had some success because I've just worked. But now that it's really to that point that I feel this radical change coming and I just know that what I want in the future is not what I've not what I've had in the past and I know that it's going to be a lot of radical change. Um, I'm not afraid. I'm just making sure that I choose the right people to go forward with and I feel a little bit back and forth sometimes because but I just you know the thing that was so good about lunch today is you have somebody sitting there telling you, stop it. Like, stop getting stuck in limp mode, for lack of better words, because you're like waiting for somebody to help you pull. Like, maybe I don't need anybody to be equally yoked to me. Maybe I just need to pull my own wagon. You know, like, I, I am submissive and I love, like, I love to have a partner and friends. Like, I love, like, but you know, I think that the fear for me is I've never just said, you know what, Tara Sanders is going to do this by herself and I don't need anybody else and it's the me show. And I've told you guys that before, like I was shocked that my page grew by 12,000 people or something when I started my spiritual journey because it had nothing to do with horses and I didn't think anybody would give a fuck what I had to say. Like I genuinely, genuinely thought that you guys had been here all this time for the horses. Like you just, you loved the horses. And so you followed me because I had the connection to really cool, badass horses. I never, and it was like the moment that that clicked that like, holy shit, no, these people love me. It was, I don't know how I didn't see that the whole time. I honestly felt a little bit disrespectful towards you all. And you know me, I would never genuinely be disrespectful to you. But in that moment, I, I recognized that disrespect that, you guys are here for me. You love me. The stars, the things that you do. Yes, you love the horses. Yes, you, but like you're here to support me. And it was just mind blowing. It was really mind blowing. I, I don't know why I had never seen that that way. Like I still could not believe that anybody would want to sit on a video and listen to anything I have to say. <laughs> so at the end of the day, um, I don't know what's coming for sure. I know that change is coming. Um, I know that I have actively made the decision to um, step away from kind of the dynamics that are that were current in my life and not due to anybody's fault. Like, please understand that this is something that it's disrupted inside of me. This is not, nobody has, no one in my life has wronged me in a way that I feel And I think that's a, a thing sometimes is when people 
wake up and they just say like, hey, I don't, I don't think this is part of my journey anymore. And I think this part of my journey for right now, maybe forever, I don't know, but it's just come to an end. And it just no longer, like, I don't, and I don't know how to explain that unless you've been there, unless you've woke up and you've said, um, I'm not ungrateful. And it's not that I don't love this life that I've created with you and this current situation. But the truth is, is that at the end of the day, my soul is, is disrupted. I, I mean, there's just, a, there was a lot of disruption in my energy and in my soul because I just knew deep down, genuinely deep down that whatever the universe has for me coming, this isn't it. And if I stay where I am and I stay complacent, sure I can make money. Sure I can, you know, live a cool little lifestyle. But my soul is craving something greater. And it's been the hardest decision I've ever made in my life to step away and say, listen, I'm still going to sell horses. I'm still going to, but I just, right now I need to discover what that means for me. I need to discover what, what's coming means for me. Because as of right now, it's, it's not where I currently am, like in all aspects. Like it may still be at my property in New Summerfield and I will still you know, Jack, you know, Jackie will always probably, I mean, God, I can't ever imagine her not being, she is freaking fantastic. But regardless, for the first time, it's just, this is not serving me. I want something different. I want to, I, I'm ready to build again. Like I built, you know, when I trained barrel horses, I built all the way up to training fraternity horses. I had great fraternity horses. And then that that didn't, that didn't sit well. It was not fulfilling for me. And I, I remember when people told me that, like, oh, Mortis was so successful and that, you know, I had a couple off, like, but I wasn't great at it. I was good at it. I could make a little bit of money, but you know what made me not great at that? Because I probably could have been really great if I had craved it. And when you're just doing something because it pays the bills and you're just having to do it, um, it's not that fulfilling. So then I trained racehorses. And I was on the cover of magazines and you guys, you've read the articles. I mean, they wrote articles and I was on the cover of a couple magazines and, you know, I, I set history. I won my first quarter horse and thoroughbred race with both breeds and in the same day. I mean, it had never been done before. It was just something really cool to be 26 year old female, you know, and to just do that was very rewarding. I loved it. But as time went on, that didn't set well with my soul. And I had people tell me. And people blamed Jacob. Oh, I cannot believe you walked away from the racehorses. My dad, my dad was furious. My dad couldn't believe that I stopped training racehorses. He was like, you're great. You know, like you can win the all American, like people, you have owners, they're sending you horses, like, you know, but that's all my dad knew. My dad knows nothing but training racehorses. So for him, for me to walk away for, from a career that had started out very successful, it was mind blowing to him. But at the end of the day, the thing that I can tell you is my soul was disrupted. And as of the point that that disruption came, I started to see the, the horse racing industry different. You know, I started to see people that would dope their horses up and even to the, even to means that it killed them. I started to just see, not that my father did that, so let's not go there, but we all know that the racehorse industry has amazing people who take care of their horses better than they take care of their family. So I was raised by that and that's all I had ever seen so I had this love affair with horse racing and then when I got out on my own and I saw all aspects of the horse racing industry and the, the backside of the racetrack which I had semi been protected from and just the true volatile behavior and the people that do drugs and nobody's faithful and it's just a very it's a very toxic because all I had ever seen was my mom and dad and the way they ran their barn so I didn't see the whole industry. And then when I did, that's not where I belonged. And I'm not knocking anybody that that's where you belong. If you love that and you love racehorses, please understand that I wish you love and light. And I can understand because my dad's horses are taken care of so good. And that, 
you know, going in my dad's barn is such a therapeutic place because the horses are just such immaculately taken care of and they're happy. And, you know, that's like what you picture when you think of racehorses, but that's not the reality for all racehorses. So it's just kind of one of those things to where I was like, this just isn't my tribe. Like this is not, this isn't really where I belong. And so then, um, I got so wrapped up in the rehoming of kill pen horses that I kind of lost sight of anything else. I mean, I spent half a decade just solely focused on that to the point that it consumed me because the thought of not rehoming the horses was just gut wrenching because they deserved better. You know, they deserve to be seen by the public. They deserve to have a chance. And you know, that's grown and evolved and now there's a kill pen on every corner and it's just changed and and it's okay. And you know, now in the last year we've started sending horses to some auctions and uh, we've had really great, great luck. My horses have brought a lot of, brought a lot of money. I mean, my horses have brought a lot of money. It's been fantastic. Um, Yeah, but I mean, there's still parts of that industry that I just have to, so now I just, you know, I really love, we went to Fort Worth, we rode the horses through the city, we really got a better idea of who those horses are, we took phenomenal photographs, I can't wait for you guys to see the photographs of Ramrod, I've got a yellow horse that I own that um, I'm kind of toying with the idea of sending him maybe to Amarillo to, um, Clay and Taylor Pages sell. They're they're phenomenal, very kind, um, and just kind of the idea of like what else is out there, you know? Like it's just weird, and and maybe I have commitment issues. I thought about this the other day. I, I, <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's just me. I I always thought like that the relationships that I had been in really didn't stick because at, deep down at the end of the day that just wasn't that just wasn't my person. You know what I mean? And like those careers, even though I had success in each of them, like I worked for Equiglobe, I trained barrel horses, I trained race horses. And if you go back to any of those three things, you will find where I had success. I, I didn't just do it. Like I had success, like faturity horses that won, race horses that won, magazine articles, covers, you know, I mean, I was successful. And then I, I always thought those careers didn't stick because that just was not my life, my life's purpose. And now that the kill pen horse thing has kind of come to where I still really want to help those horses. And I do, I do really want to, I just kind of want to do it different. Um, you know, I can't help but wonder, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just that person that I do things until I get really successful at it and I get complacent and then I want to build bigger. I want to build greater. I want something. And so that's just where I am. And so I'm just having to kind of sit with myself and just evaluate my beliefs and, you know, just evaluate my beliefs and evaluate my future. And, um, yeah. It's actually been really therapeutic. It's been great. And I've just done this off of social media so that, and really away from people. I, I took that weekend and kind of went to Trinity. I've just kind of done whatever and taken a step back and just evaluated things from a, just a step back and I don't know how to explain it other than um, just, I didn't want any outside influences. I want to make the decisions I'm making because that's genuinely what my intuition tells me this is. Um, you know, well, that's the thing. Our souls sometimes do crave something more. And, um, and it's been really cool to, um, it's been really cool to kind of have people around me that just love me and, and want what's best for me. And they're not telling me, Oh, you need, Oh, you need to fight this out and stay or, Oh, you need, they're telling me, you know, like just you take a deep breath and you sit with yourself and you figure it out. You're 35. You have proven you can be successful. And it's nice to have people that like breathe that life into you that are like, man, you, 
it didn't matter what you did. You ran barrels, you trained racehorses, you did kill Penry Homie, now you've done trading horses, and it's all worked. Everything I've done, it's worked. So now do, do it, you, I kind of know I can make it work. So that takes a little of the pressure off. So do it in a way that you find happiness. Like, you know, a big thing that I really regret is I look back and when we very first started really kind of doing the kill penry homing and stuff, I made a lot of sales and I kind of got to go and see. And now I feel like I just am in Texas and the horses just kind of get dumped off and I don't have a lot of say in what comes there. And, um, you know, I really, I really loved going and kind of having the ability to, um, kind of pick and, you know, pick and choose and not that the horses that come there, I'm not grateful for. I mean, I think they're great. I love them. And I'm not saying that, that people that have bought have not done a great job by anybody's standards. I'm just saying that, um, I really love to travel. I, I don't know. I think a lot of you guys know that. I think you guys know that I will get in the vehicle and just go. I can, fuck, I can just, I probably was meant to be a gypsy because I can just get in the vehicle and go and like have no, just, my daughter's that way. Tinley, she loves it. Like, let's go somewhere. Where are we going to go? I don't know, mommy, let's go. I mean, so she, I 100% bred that into her. Whatever it is that makes you want to get in the vehicle and just go somewhere, my kid has that. And, um, you know, right now I just, I feel a little bit like, I feel a little bit like I'm the one that's having to constantly run that rabbit wheel and there's not any relief for me. I'm having to have catalog horses ready for these catalog sales. I'm having to try to rehome the kill pen horses. I'm trying to raise my daughter. I have my staff. You know, there's just a lot. And to be honest, it's not that I want to scale back. I actually want to build my business bigger. And I want to build my business in a new way. I just, I think, the main thing is I have a lot of customers that come to me looking for horses from all aspects. From, from performance horses to trail horses to life partner type horses. And I really love having a little bit more um, in-depth ability and knowledge about each horse and trying to kind of put them where they need to go. And, um, I, you know, Jacob has always said that it's quantity, like, you know, sell lots and lots of kill horses for lower prices and you have way more quantity than to do a smaller amount and it's quality and you have a lot of time and money invested in them and there's a lot more potential for loss and there's a lot more potential for and so I understand his business model by by all standards of the imagination it has been a very lucrative business model it has been very um it's been you know cut the do not float the teeth you know cut the bleeding if do not throw good money after bad. I mean, I understand every aspect of his business model and I respect it a great deal because it has for a long time really served our family and it has been um, an incredible ride. But what I'm craving is something a little different. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed taking the horses to the stockyards. I took some photographs that y'all haven't seen yet that were probably some of the most artistic and I've had several several people reach out um I love that I just um man we all need a teddy in our life I don't know I'm telling y'all just I have I don't know I started to change the way I pray and I started to just kind of call back to me what was mine anything I've ever sent out into the world whether it be good or bad listen I started to call back to me, like if I had put it out into the universe, bring it back. I'd like all my positive energy back that, you know, I, I just want everything that was meant to be mine that I've sent out to come back. But listen, just all the negative that I've ever put out there, I want to call it back to me and I want to neutralize it because what I never want to do is leave any human, any human worse than I found them. I just, I pride myself in, if you and I had a connection and um, everything I ever did for you or whatever, I just want to leave you, you know, when relationships end or whatever ends, I just want to leave you better than I found you. And whatever it is that I, I gave you or whatever, like, I, I send it with love and light. But I think sometimes when friendships and stuff end, it can be a little toxic and you can accidentally without meaning to, just in your own emotion, 
put some negative out there and that doesn't leave people better than you found them. So anyway, I really started to reflect just on the way that I treat people, the way that I've built people, the way that they've had an effect on me. And um, as I've started to really do that, I've really attracted a different caliber of human. And it's amazing. It's a, just because those people are, are absolutely contagious in wanting you to be a better person, wanting you to be stronger, smarter, fitter, whatever you want to do, do it and we'll help you. Like I've never had so many people in my life that say, Hey, tomorrow, if you want to go left and you, that gates open and like, you're going to head out, um, let us know if you need anything like, we'll, we'll. and I mean, it's been really amazing. It's just been, I mean, I have, and you know, even today at lunch, Teddy was like, look, if you're one to send horses to these rope horse sales, cause I told him I just hate it. Cause I don't really rope. And you know, I see, I told him, I like, I really, I feel like this has just really been put, put on my heart. Like this is something I just kind of want to do it, but like, we don't rope, we don't, you know, and he was like, I'll do it. I'll help you. I'll do whatever. Just listen, you just call me and I'll show up. He was like, you need videos. I was like, yeah, I was like, I do. And you know, and I was like, but I need them like this, you know, and I'm like telling him what I need or whatever, you know, and I'm like, oh, it just sucks. Cause like, I need, I need them like this and I need it that way. And I need like, ah. and he's like, I got you. He's like, why didn't you say something sooner? And I was like, I don't know. I was like, you know, I kind of have, but I just, you know, and like, and he's like, girl, he's like, you didn't say it to me. And I was like, I, I know, but I didn't want to bother you because it's not a you thing. Like, this is just, it's me. And he's like, no, I got you. He's like, so coming tomorrow like and I love that about him I love it like he didn't say like yeah like maybe next Thursday like se seven Tuesdays he was like are you coming tomorrow he's like let me check the weather and I just I don't know like it's just fucking man I just that's kind of what made me go live was like listen when you start to just have all of that disruption in your life and you just feel like hey I really need I need something bigger. Like I'm not, I'm not step. I haven't stepped into my full potential. I've not stepped into my full purpose. God is radically working on my life. Like there's just all this is going and like everything's elevating. And, and right now it's really important for me to focus on that, like that life vision, you know, like on my life book, it's really important for me to focus on that life book because right now it's all coming into play to where the decisions I make are really what's riding on the pages for the next chapters, you know, and, um, man, I just, I'm like that though. Like if you called me and you were like, this is a problem. And I've had people in the past tell me when I vent to you, I don't expect for you to fix it. Like when I vent to you, I just, I just need you to listen. I don't need any solution. And that's hard for me because like, say you, you come to me as a friend and you tell me like, Hey, I can't do X, Y, Z. And I, I don't know, you know, it's really like if I have the ability to do X, Y, Z for you or I have a game plan for X, Y, Z, like I'm going to try to implement that right now. Like let's fix it immediately so you never have to think about this again. And there's a lot of people that are like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like I just, I needed you to listen. I didn't need you to fix anything. I didn't, I just needed you to listen and like you're getting too involved and but I need that. Like, that's what I need. I need the kind of people that get too involved. I just, I crave that connection and I need people that are like, Hey, you said you needed this. So like I showed up and by the way, and Jackie's that way, like, don't tell Jackie you have a problem. Cause you're like, my mom is that way. I told my mom that I hated my bedroom set and that I really just really didn't like it. And that I didn't think that the energy from that was good. Cause I didn't like it. And like, I leave to go to the barn at like eight o'clock in the morning and I come home and my mom, all, I go in my bedroom and there's like no furniture and all my clothes are stacked up in the corner. My mom's like, I put your bedroom suit on marketplace for $500 and somebody bought it. It's gone. And I'm like, I mean, lit, like that's my mother that, that like that literally happened in my life like three months ago. It wasn't, it's not a joke. Like it literally happened. So my mother is that person. Like, don't, don't give my mom a problem because like you'll come home and there'll be $500 on the cabinet and all your clothes are on the floor and your bedroom furniture is gone. It's gone because she didn't like it. And my God, if it doesn't give you peace and you don't like the energy when you walk in that room, it is gone. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> there's no furniture in here now. Like what the fuck, you know? And I love it. I actually love it. I take such great pride. Like I have a bed. And it's a king size bed and all my bedding and all my pillows 
but there's nothing. And do you know that the energy is immaculate because there's just, it's minimal. There's nothing. And I don't even fucking want anything in there now. I'm like, I'm not getting bedroom furniture. I just bought stackables and put all the clothes that should be in drawers in stackables in my closet. And now my, my bedroom is like this really weird open. There's like an echo in there. It's fantastic. But I have this huge space that I can sit and meditate and do yoga. And when Tinley's home, she plays in the floor right there like while I'm doing yoga. And it's just a very, like, I love it. I, I love it. It ended up being great. But Teddy was that way. Like, he didn't say like, oh, man, yeah. Yeah, that sucks that you really want to, like, have these rope horses and go to these cells and, you know, he said, cool, like, so how can I get you the videos? Like, what, where do we, like, let me, so it's just, it's neat to start to see that I have people around me that have that same radical energy, like, and it's been good for me because it has made my anxiety and my depression, they're gone. I just don't, I don't suffer with them. I'm not saying that there won't be a time in the future I won't, but currently, just because of the way that things are going and flowing and I've surrounded myself with people that just really want radical action, I don't have, I don't have that because it's really not situational. I don't find myself in situations that um, I'm just kind of stuck because now I have so many great people that are just one phone call away. Like, I mean, I told him, I was like, yeah, I have people texting me yesterday, like over and over again, like, Oh, the, you know, I really want this horse or that horse. I just need videos. I just need this. Can you just do this? Can you just, and I told him like, it just sucks. I don't really have the way to get that kind of video. And so we'll do them tomorrow. And I'm like, Oh yeah. Like, yeah. You know? And like when I told Jackie the same thing, I was like, you know, these really better quality horses. Like I just, I wanted to like, take pictures of them that are like that, like blow people out of the water. Like I just, man, I just, they're not edited and this is not the photo. It's like a photo of the photo. So I hate to do this because I feel like it's kind of cheap, but you know what? I'll just show you guys some behind the scene photos. So I took the horse over to the stockyards and I just want you guys to kind of see like a behind the scene. You guys have seen horses that do their sell ads. Like you've all seen people that post um, like those hundred thousand dollar horses that sell in the premier sales. And we've all seen like the photographs that they take, but when I tell you that it came to me, I'm, I'm not, I'm not as good with my camera as I wish I was. It, and I have like a Canon Rebel and I need to really step up to a better, probably a better actual body, but I've got great lenses. But listen, I, um, yeah, like, I don't know if you guys can, let me just see if y'all can see like the, like, yeah. Can y'all see that? Like, I don't know if you guys can see him. So when I tell you that these photos are like unbelievable, like they are truthfully some of the coolest photographs. And I sent them to a couple of people and I was like, hey, what do you think about this for cell photos? I know they're like kind of out of the norm or whatever. Um, they were like, holy shit. Like, holy shit, who did those? And I was like, I did. You know, like, I did them. Like, this one. Like, I did, I, like, I did them. And I just, man, like, they felt kind of artistic-y to me. Not just, like, um, they felt kind of, like, you know, they felt more, like, artistic than, like, a cell photograph. But I thought that the artistic part of it would kind of catch people's attention and maybe, like, have, you know, just a different, um, you know, just kind of have a different feel. Like, I don't know if you guys can see this one. And uh, they were like, what, like, you did those? And uh, I was like, yeah, like I did, you know? And um, like, but you guys have to remember, like this is literally just like, I this is a photo of a photo. Like, first of all, this is my other phone where I had taken a photo on the back of my camera. So this is a photo of a photo. So clearly like the actual edited photos are going to be clear and they're crisp and they're, I mean, they're done professionally, but like, this is just, I mean, this is just kind of a, and I just, you know, really had a blast with that. And I just think that that's something that I really enjoyed. So if you have that quality of photograph and you have these gildings that like that gilding can do everything. I mean, he ropes calves, he's branded, he's doctored, he's sound, he's five years old, he's registered. Um, he rides, you know, you can slip a neck rope on him and ride him like that kind of a horse 
deserves those kind of photographs and he deserves to get to go to one of these really prestigious type cells because he's a one in a million. That horse is fantastic, you know? He deserves that and it's something that's just really a um, a great thing. You know, it's great. He deserves to get to, to go present himself in that manner and um, something else I think that Jackie and I want to do and this is something that her and I have talked in depth about is that um, you know, nothing hurts my feelings more than when somebody buys a horse out of the kill pen and they get it home and they hate it. They hate it. And it doesn't happen very often, but it happens. And it just sucks because those horses don't really have a lot of opportunity to be evaluated. And you really don't know, like, are they sound? I don't know. It's been here two days. Like it's walking sound right now. You know, like, why did they dump it? I don't know. You know, and, um, I still think there's a lot of great horses that come out of that, that really can turn around and make just great life partners for people. But in the same breath, like, I just really, really love, I love the updates. Like I get so many great updates. I mean, and I get tons of them every day. Like it's not just one here and one there. I get lots and lots of amazing updates from people. And that's kind of what has fueled me over the last five or six years and kind of kept me tied to this is that so many positive stories have come and so many people do love it. And, um, but I just, I think, I think what I'm trying to say in not so many words, <laughs> an hour into this video later, let me give you the cliff notes. No, I'm just kidding. Like, is that not the most like, what are you doing with your life, Tara? I don't know. Like, I don't fucking know. I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, <laughs> and I mean that. Like, I don't know. <sighs> I just, okay, so, and I, and I have a great deal of respect for Jacob and his family, but they very much so want to just grow, 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 big, 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 money, 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 cattle, 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 horses, horses, horses. Like it's just, and it just gets so big. I want you guys to know that it just gets so big and it gets so amplified and it's, it's so overwhelming. And I, I know that this is going to sound very crazy, but like, I just, I want to scale back and I want to have like 20. Okay. I, I just, I literally just want 20. And I want to be able to spend a lot of time with them and just have it like a training program <laughs> and to just probably have certain cells and have a couple that go here and a couple that go there. And I just, I want to just connect in a way that like I get up every day and I go to the barn and we ride those horses and I can go live and, and kind of show you behind the scenes and let you guys be a part of it and let you guys really learn about the horses and, and let those horses be seen by the public. But to have horses that when they go to cells, I mean a little bit higher end horse and I just want to slow down. So as I'm saying, I want to grow and change. It, it doesn't mean that I want to quadruple the size of my business. I actually want to scale back. I want 20. And, um, you know, and you know, if we have some horses that come in that, that need to be, that are kill pen type horses, I can still show them or, or whatever, um, and, and hopefully help find up homes. But I also want to make some of the cells and I want to take Tinley and I, I want to just be able to just take a step back and actually kind of just, I don't want to say vacation because obviously it's work, but just be able to enjoy. I want to be able to go. I don't want to be stuck all the time. I also, when my dad calls me and he needs me to help him, I don't want to have to tell him, hey, I'm sorry, I can't, I'm swamped this week and Jacob has 90, 11 things and there's just no way I can help you. I'm so sorry. Like I never, I never want to say that again. And if I ever have to say that again, I'm going to just walk away from this entirely because at this point, this has consumed my life to the point that it's consumed my life to the point that I can't do enough. I can't do enough to appease everybody. Um, I can't keep everybody happy. There's, it's constant, like, you need to be doing more. You need to be doing more. We need to sell more. You need to do this. You need to, and I'm just, I'm done. And I just want to politely say that. And I just want to scale back. I want to have a little bit better quality. Um, 
and I do have great quality, so please don't think I'm saying that. I just, I just cannot give myself to a hundred and something horses at all times to the point that, um, I just, I don't, you know, the overhead is astronomical, the hay, the feed, the labor, like, I could scale back and have less horses and do a better job by those horses, um, spend less hay, less money, have more free time, and those horses could be worth more money, so the profit is still there to where it pays all the overhead, and just enjoy my daughter, and, and whatever, wherever, whomever I choose to build my life with, for that to be a little bit more of my soul for focus moving forward. I would really, believe it or not, I just, I really, I know I've kind of, I've jokingly said this before, but I mean it like, I'm somebody's wife and I just, I just really want to focus moving forward more. And I just, right now with the way that our lifestyle is, and there's no let up in sight, there's no change in sight. In fact, it's more and more pressure. I just, I want out of the rat race, politely. I'm politely bowing out of the rat race. And um, my therapist said that my most toxic trait is that my loyalty holds me places long beyond my responsibility to the point that it's become so toxic for me that um, I disassociate and I just take it. So it's almost like it's so bad but the loyalty in me just believes in the greaterness and that you don't retreat to the point that I'm kind of like the horse that's been whipped to the point that like, I just, I can take it. Like I can fucking take it. You guys ever had one that's so fucking tough mouthed that you just had to go to a hackamore because at this point, even the biggest bit, they just fucking can take it or they just duck their head and hide. Like I can take it. So that's my toxic trait is that I can just, you can just push me to the absolute breaking point, to the driving in, and right when I'm going to break, I just disassociate and go harder. I just work harder. I grind harder. I put more pressure on myself. I just do more. I, And it's made me a really miserable person, and it's made me a really um, ugly person. It's made me have to keep up with a rat race that quit being comfortable for me and quit being my calling a long time ago, but the push and the drive, because again, I am submissive, which means when you tell me to go, I'm going to go. And when you push, I'm going to go harder. And, um, it's very hard because in all aspects of my life, from friends to some members of my family, to my job, um, people will take advantage of that. People will absolutely push and push and push and drive and push and drive and push and drive and push. And, drive and push. And you never say no, you never say no, you never say no. And they just push and push. And before you know it, what was uncomfortable for me 10 years ago today is a walk in the park because the problems and the, the it's this much bigger. And now I'm just the strongest, most stoic, most, I mean, I fucking work. I, I just, I know that you guys don't understand, but I mean, there's not a, a moment of my day that I'm not. It's not work related. Everything is work related. I'm at lunch working on stuff. I go home. It's, and you know what? After I had COVID, I don't want it to be work related. I want to literally, I don't want that. And you know what? I, um, I want to garden and I want to plant shit and I want to have time for it not to be dead. Okay. Like that's what I want. And I want, um, to spend a lot of time with my kid. And when the horses go to sales, I want to go with them and I want to be able to be there and I want Jackie to be able to go and I want for them to know that where they're going and where we're taking them, it's not to be feared because if it's not the right situation for you, we absolutely will bring you home. We respect you. We love you. And I just, I just want to call back to me my calling and I want for my future to be what God has for me. And I want to be able to serve the horses that for so long have served my entire family from my, my parents to me as a child to now. I want to respect them and I want to just give back to them. And I know that I have, I have, I have, I have. But it's always been me doing the best that I can within my means because I'm not really the one in control. I'm not really the one that has the final say so. 
at the end of the day, I'm being driven to just go harder, do more. And I just, I'm stepping out of the rat race. So, um, please don't read between the lines. Please don't take this in gossip. Please do not spread rumors online that, you know, that my marriage is over. Or that, that, uh, please just, please respect me. And the just don't, don't read between the lines. Just understand that as I make this decision and as I step back and I'm radically changing what I want, if the people around me say fuck you and um, they want to be toxic and they want to say like, if you don't do it my way, I'm taking everything, I'm to the point in my life that I'm going to let them take it and I'm not going to fight. I'm just, if you want to do it your way and you don't like the choices I'm making for me and it makes you uncomfortable, I'm, I'm, I'm at peace with having nothing versus staying on the path that I'm on. So as I come to this crossroads of go harder, build bigger, it being forced this way, I can go straight and just kind of keep it where it is and keep that fight because, you know, I'm, I'm constantly being driven to do more, but I just am kind of, or you know what, this gate over here is open and I want to hook a left. And my intuition has told me from the jump to hook the left. Fucking go. And don't look back. Like you, if you have to leave with nothing, leave with nothing, but fucking hook a left. And um, I've just, just really focused on where I am. I want to continue my spiritual journey. I want to help others to be as authentic in their self as I am learning to be. I've always been a very authentic person and been able to verbalize my anger, my, my frustration, my whatever. But now I want to verbalize from a place of understanding, like these are things that I did very wrong in my life and they were very uncomfortable, but they came from a place of desperation or a place of hurt or, and I just, I think a lot of people don't know how to sort through that. So it allows some behaviors to become very toxic. And, um, I am not a toxic individual. <laughs> I'm actually, and uh, I'm naturally a Virgo. I'm a Virgo Pisces Taurus. So I'm a hot headed perfectionist and there's nothing worse than that. So what I've had to do is realize that the, that's what comes to me naturally per my astrological signs, but it, but I'm aware of them. So I need to work on them. I don't, everything doesn't have to be perfect and I don't have to be hot headed. There's absolutely no reason in the world to be upset about things that are out of people's control. There's a giant difference between hey, I really thought this was a good idea in the moment. It went south really fast. This is what happened. And a malicious act. And some of you may or may not know this, but when I trained racehorses, um, I had some pony horses in the pony barn at, at Blue Ribbon Downs, and they died. They, they were killed. They were actually given medication. Necropsies were done. We know exactly what it was different forms of clambuterol and albuterol and they were mixed with various things and it killed them. I lost a mare, a gilding. I had two other gildings in, in the ICU. One of them foundered to the point his feet fell off and he had to be euthanized. The other one ended up kind of recovering. Um, so with that being said, um, later on we found out that it was Robert Demet. We, for a long time, people blamed me. Jacob had just gotten in trouble when that happened. He had just gotten in trouble. And people um, loved to gossip. And people said that I did it for insurance money, that I had killed those horses. And he had a kill pin. And so we didn't love horses. And that was the narrative, was that he was a monster and he needed money fast. And um, that was really gut-wrenching for me because it was very, very untrue. It was a very untrue situation. And later we found out that Robert Dimmitt, who was in the barn right behind there, had a couple of horses himself die during that time. And he started realizing that this medicine that he was making and concocting in his mind to make these horses run faster, he didn't know how much to give them. So what he chose to do was go to the pony pen and give every horse a little bit more to see like what the reaction was. So the reason that, that the severity of the side effects for each horse was different was because from this horse to this horse, he gave this one 10 cc's, this one eight, this one. And um, he was later caught and he actually went to prison. For those of you who didn't know that my story and that story 
ended up being similar. It's because I really kept it offline because it was such a place of hurt for me that I just didn't want to revisit it because I knew him. He was my dad's friend. He was, he was my friend. He's somebody I saw, you know, that they had the nerve to come and check on me after it happened and be like, we're so sorry. What happened? Yeah. So, um, he ended up killing several more horses and, um, dug the feet out. Some of them, you know, my gilding had the feet falling off from that medication. Come to find out his horses in his barn, their feet were also falling off. And he started trying to like dig at their feet so that people didn't see that. I don't know. Anyway, they found all kinds of like dead carcasses at his house on these horses. He had been like experimenting. He went to prison. Long story short, he went to prison. He's who killed my horses. I had been blamed for it at one point. Not by anybody officially, like not by the police or anything like that, but like just by online vigilantes who have something to say. So where I've had to learn in my meditation is there is a vast difference between this sucks and it was an accident, like nobody maliciously did it and somebody maliciously made the conscious decision to do that with no care for the monetary, emotional, or long-term side effects that that was going to have on me. Never one time. You know, it's bad enough that you could do that to an animal. It's really terrible enough that you could do that to an animal in your barn. And now you've chose to do it to mine because you needed more to experiment on. And um, that's a malicious thing. So... For me, I'm very hot tempered and I used to really kind of be hard on my staff. Like, you know, like, let's just say that I go in and like a horse has hurt itself and I feel like, you know, whatever, like, oh, and you know, I would cheer everybody's ass. And now I'm just, I've, I'm telling you, like in the last year, I just, especially since I had COVID, it's been very, 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 very amazing to just say, well, it happens. You know, we turned two horses out together and we thought it was a great idea. And unfortunately, uh, by the way, this horse is really aggressive compared to the other one. And he kicked him twice and he bit him. And, um, and then, I, you know, and I used to say, I didn't fucking tell you to do that. And now I just know like those are horses and shit happens. And now we know. So let's never turn that one out with another one again. And let's get that one situated and get him doctored and you know like now I just have that unbelievable ability that I didn't have in the past to just navigate through those stressful situations when Precious stuck his head in the gate and jerked back when Jackie called me she was just I could hear her voice on the phone something bad had happened and I could tell she thought I was going to be mad and instead of being mad I told myself in my head right then no matter what she tells you happen do not react negatively because you never want people to lie to you. And people lie out of fear. People never lie for any other reason, but they're afraid. People lie because they're afraid. They're afraid. They're afraid. And my, my dad had always told me that. Like, why, why would you lie? Like, what are you afraid of? Like, what the fuck are you, what the fuck are you afraid of? You know? Um, so I could hear in her voice, like whatever she's fixing to tell me is like, so she said, well, um, we have a little problem and, and Precious is hurt. And I said, oh, bad. And she said, well, I, I don't know. We may, maybe he's lost his eye. And I said, okay, well, that's okay, Jackie. These things happen now. How did he do it? And I could hear her take a deep breath. And she said, well, actually, he stuck his head through the gate. And she said, I've seen him push on it a million times. You know, he'll push his chest on that gate. And she was like, I get tired of adjusting the chain. And she's like, you know, I'll put it back and... You know, and she's like, and I, I'm, I'm just going to be honest this morning when he was doing it, she said, I didn't walk over there and shoo him away from it. I just thought, God, I'm just going to let him do it. And later on, I'll, you know, instead of fixing it 10 times a day, I'll just fix it at the end of the day. So she was already telling me that she felt some guilt, you know, and well, I told her, Jackie, that's fucking part of it. I mean, that's a big motherfucker. So anyway, what did he do? How did he, she said, well, believe it or not, he pushed the gate just enough that he could get his neck through it. And she said, he put his head down to graze. You know, like God is, you know, the, the, at this point, the gate's like beat open. So he sticks his head down and she said right about where it, the chain is, where his throat stopped. She said he was grazing and she said right then the dog ran by or, and she said he set back, but and he didn't lift his head up. So when he set back, he hit the, you know, he hit it and she said, and he just started panicking and just hitting 
the bars and she said his head finally came back through but it scalped the whole side of his face and I think his eye is hanging out and I said okay pick up my truck and trailer and run him to Crockett if they need to remove the eye so I mean at this point she's like bawling and I'm you know I'm 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 actually sitting at breakfast breakfast with somebody like there's somebody at breakfast with me and I'm so I tell her no problem so two minutes later I get pictures and she said it's not as bad as I thought the eye is still there but this huge flap of skin is hanging off and I think that he's got um he's fractured the bone no problem great news just get him to Crockett send him and so we sent him and they did have to scrape a little bone and they pulled all of that back and now today you would never know that Precious really had a problem except for a little tiny you know, a little tiny scabby scab there that's, and now he weighs 1,350 pounds and he looks like a rock star. You guys saw him recently. Horse has never looked better in his life. And it's given us the opportunity to really know his character and he's just gotten really docile and he's just really become friendly and he's just a pet. And it's just been, it's been great for that horse because he's had to be in the barn and be doctored and his entire demeanor has changed. And anyway, long story short, it ended up just being fine. A year ago, I would have cussed her, told her how fucking stupid she was. I mean, for no reason. Under no circumstances did anybody in my staff maliciously allow that to happen. It's an accident. An accident is an accident. They call them accidents for a reason. People lose loved ones to accidents. So why would I be bent out of shape that a horse fucked its head up in a fucking gate and a fence when... I mean, accidents happen. Like, you just can't beat yourself up over over an accident. So, anyway, what I'm just trying to say is at this point in my life, like, I know I'm naturally hot-headed, so I have absolutely worked on that to the point that I'm no longer, I might be, um, I might have a Taurus moon, but, like, I'm really not bullheaded. Like, I have just gotten very... I can handle this. I can handle it no matter what comes. I can handle it. It's going to be okay. And i um, been that way with finances. I've been that way with the horses, my staff. And that radical change inside of me has been, it's been very humbling. It's been a blessing. I'm in a very different place in my life. And now I just, I still listen. I still want to, to grow and have my business, but I would really love to take a step back, have less horses catalog them really get to know them better be able to help people kind of in all price points from the 20 2500 and under 2500 to 5000 5 to 10 you know the the 10 to 20 and over 20,000 range and kind of categorize horses by price which means that you might not be able to afford the $20,000 one but I still have something here for you um and really work with horses where they are and and help people to be able to just find those perfect horses for them. Like I said, scale back. I would like for people to come to the facility and be able to ride their horses before they go home with them. You're still going to buy them offline just like we do now and then come. Um, but you know, we, we, we've really talked about it and I would like to open up. We've, we really want to do a little bit of a clothing line. I love hats. I love t-shirts. I've looked into some private labeling. I've looked into some other things. You guys make sure you reach out to me. If you know a little bit about that, just reach out to your girl. Um, because I really just, I have just a different taste and I like really funny, stupid stuff. And I mean, I'll just show you. So I have wanted this, been wanting it, went back today and bought it. How many of you guys know that I have a very stupid sense of humor? Are y'all ready for this? You see it? You see it? You see it? It says, yeah. It says, have a sparkly day. And it's got a smiley face with a crown. On the back, it says queen. So while I was in there, you know me, got to buy two. So I bought this one. And it just says smile. And I just fucking love it. And I will be wearing these all winter long with yoga pants. Do you hear me? They're kind of oversized and really long. And I will be rocking those everywhere I go with my vans on. So I will have my sparkly shirts, my yoga pants, and my vans. And that will be me because that's just where I am in life. And I don't give a shit if anybody likes it or not. 
and uh, anyway so while I while I do want to scale back in the aspect of how many we have and kind of what we're doing there um, I definitely want to make a trip to the stockyards on a regular basis to take those videos and to take those photos and it's just really hard on me right now to like I said I've always and please you guys please do not read between the lines I just I really don't want I don't want all of that out there and I don't want to have to read it I thought about disabling my social media when I kind of I, I thought about it I was like you know what? I can disable my social media for 60 days and then just come back live at the end of 60 days and explain where I've been and what kind of what's transpired. And then I thought I don't have to do that. I can be honest with you guys that over the last 10 years, I have just given so much of myself to something that I, I built so big to the point now that it's to this, this size, but it's still not enough for the people around me. And to to have that pressure that you're not doing enough and to have that pressure that you're not good enough and to have that pressure that what you're doing is not enough when it's really too much to the point that like there's no there's no enjoyment in life and to say I still want to do this but I don't want to do it this way and if that means I'm going to walk away with nothing I'll walk away with nothing and rebuild from the from the ground up so that I can do it my way because like I, I just really, and I mean this, I'm going to spend the next 10 years building in a way that at the end of the day, I come home and just thoroughly enjoy the life I built. And it's hard for me right now because what has me, and I will tell you, with me being as submissive as I am when it comes to my personal life. I have allowed myself to be driven and driven and driven and driven and driven and driven to the point that I'm miserable and I can't do enough and I just. So to think that I'm going to stop what I'm doing and I'm going to do it different. But to do it alone is scary because I just am not that person. Like I've always just been. But you know. My dad said the other day, he's like, Terry, you know, you just, you want so bad to just build that life and to just be hooked and, you know, to, to build. And he's like, it's okay to just build for yourself. It really is. Like, it is okay to take a step back and realize that just build for yourself. Just build yourself. Like, why? And I told him, I just, I've always been that person. Like, I'm somebody's wife. Like, I just, that's me. And my dad is like, it's so toxic of you because you will just build and build and build until you, and I'm like, you're right. You're right. I'm, listen, I'm not, I'm not going to fight my dad on that. It's, but that's why I have not been online. It's why I have been quiet. It's just why we've kind of taken that step. And I just, out of respect for everybody and everything, I don't want anybody to think that anything, anybody's done anything wrong. I just need off the rat race. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to do life more my way. I just, I kind of feel like I should have to. Yes. Hey, uh, somebody called, I guess. Have you been sitting here a while? Yeah, I'm live. <laughs> oh, you're live? I'm live on Facebook. Oh, okay. Somebody was calling. Okay. They just didn't know what was going on. Said, saw okay. you sitting out here for a while. And yeah, no worries. Nervous, so. It's okay. All good. No, I'm good. Thank you. All right. Do I not disrupt the peace and people? Listen, we had this conversation the other day. And I, I want to believe this guy. But he was parked right here a little while ago. And I think he saw me. Because he kind of like gave me the like winky wink. He was parked right here. Anyway, he left. And he came back a second ago. And I don't know, maybe he thought I was in here talking to myself. He's like, I think there's an insane person in a Jeep. Like, I'm like, sir, I'm just live on Facebook. And I'm like parked nowhere. Like, I'm like, anyway, if somebody really did call though, that would be typical. So we went to the stockyards the other day and it was like Jackie and I. And um, man, I disrupted the piece of a lady that was sitting in the booth behind us and it was fucking wild. I don't know, like she had no excuse, you hear me? No excuse, she just got angry. But anyway, anyway, so the poor cop, I guess, apparently thought that I was just like, and you're talking to myself or I'd been here a while, but it's just me and I'm not, 
bathroom nothing wrong I'm just talking to you guys this is why I need to do this in front of my barn and not in public that way people don't think I'm just sitting in my car like ranting to myself I'm like sir there's like a ton of people on here like it's really like there's lots of comments Jackie I think I'm on a good path too I really do I I just need to take a second and just really evaluate things because I just I just do. Heather, why are you laughing at me? Heather, did was it you? Like, this is, I would not put it past Heather. Heather probably is the one that called the cops just to see what they would do. My, my virtual assistant, if y'all don't know Heather by now, God meet her. She is a trip. I would not put it past you to have been the one that called in just to be like, hey, just so that you can like give me a heart attack. Ugh. But anyway, that's where I've been. That's what I'm doing. And like I said, it was good to sit down at lunch with Teddy today. Like it was, God, it was so good. <laughs> like it was just so good. And it was good to be able to just tell him like, yeah, I'm just, you know, this is where I'm afraid. Like, like this is my fear. And what a good motherfucker. He was like, don't be afraid. Just if that's what you need tomorrow, bring them. He was like, I'll do it. Like, and I, I just told him, I was like, man, I just know that if I'm going to scale back, I am going to have to have, like, of course we can do the, to 2,500, 25 to five, you know, five to $10,000 horses. I said, but when you really start to focus on those horses over 10,000, I was like that, there's a lot of profit to be made there. But like, I've got to have these videos. I was like, none of us wrote. I was like, I, I mean, I fuck around. Like, I've, I've been practicing. I've gotten pretty good. But, like, you know, I mean, it's got to be done right. And, you know, it's just, it's crazy to have somebody like that in your life that just, like, just puts their arms around you and says, like, girl, bring me the horses tomorrow. I'll get the videos. I'll do it. Just bring them. Like, how many you got? Like, let me make some calls. You need them pushing cows out in the pasture? Let me make some, I got some friends. You need them in the cell barn? And I just thought to myself, like, that is the energy that all people need to have. Like, no excuses, no fear. Hi. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for checking on me. He's like, I bet he like called in another car. You know that he was like, oh, there's a schizophrenic in the parking lot of the gas station uh, talking to herself. I'm in, <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm live on Facebook. If y'all think, listen, if y'all think I'm not fixing to go get 5% tamp put on the fucking front windows of this bitch where nobody can see in here, you watch. I'm make, I'll am make. i make the appointment in the morning. I'm tinting this motherfucker so dark they can't see in here. You know, honestly, the reason I don't have tint on my windows, and I know this sounds really bad. So when I was in my early 20s, I dated a guy that was a drug dealer. Like, for real, for real. Like, fucking slinging major dope like the plugs plug like I, I wasn't dealing with like the guy on the corner and the charge and all like I mean I fucked with the plugs plug so in my stupidity of dealing with this Mexican guy and just all the dope and all the shit and all the stuff like I never did the drugs but we sold lots of them okay like we were slinging dope left and right I got indicted in federal prison over all of this most of you know this story let me just tell you guys the one time that we got pulled over that I was driving that scared me the most was because a cop said, well, we always feel like people with 5% tent are doing something wrong. So when it was just me and I was like, sir, it's just me. I don't know. And he was like, no, it's fine. And like, he let me go. And like, truthfully, like, I mean, I mean, like my heart was just fucking thumping. And I always, after that, I've never tinted my windows since then because cops generally, when they can see in, they know like, oh, it's just a fucking mom. Like, oh, it's just some white bitch, you know, like. So even after that point, even when I still dated him, any vehicle that I drove, I didn't want tint on any of the windows. So it's just like a trauma thing. Like I don't want my windows tinted at all because I never want it. And now I'm not afraid of cops. Like what the fuck? I'm not scared of cops at this point in my life. Like I'm not even remotely scared of the police. So like, I mean, they can pull me over. Like my background is spotless. But and by the way, for those of you who are like, don't say things like that, Tara, you're live. Like, there's also like a statue of limitations. Like, after my five years was up and I could no longer be federally indicted into prison, I can say and do what I want. I can write the book. I can write the chapters. I can talk about it. 
and um, it was really good. It was like a good, it was like a good thing for me. Like now that I look back on it, I'm like, man, like I learned so much about life and the way people work and that people that do things like that are just, you know, the thing is, is like, and you can go back and read a lot of, um, especially about like John Gotti. I'll use John Gotti. He was just such a mobster, you know, such a gangster. They killed people. They fucking did drugs under, you know, under the table gambling, whatever. But if you go into the communities that him and like, you know, his mob where they lived, like they were celebrated, not, and I mean, you're like, but they were criminals. But at the end of the day, like they were good people. Like they were, they were so good to their community and the people around them and they would help anybody. And it just makes you realize that like all humans, 100% of us have good and bad in us. All of us, all of us. We're all capable of the very worst and we're all capable of the very best. And so it's just funny, and I use that as an example because you can judge somebody for their worst moments and the shit they've done, and they're a felon, and oh my god, she dated a guy when she was in her 20s, and they, yeah. But you'll turn around and you'll find people that will sing my praises and tell you that I am the very most loyal, best motherfucker they've ever had in their life, and that they could call me tomorrow from a thousand miles away, and I would come get them, and I'm just a fucking ride or die. So it's just, it's just different. You know, and so it just taught me that it taught me that all people have good aspects and bad aspects. And at the end of the day, every human on this planet is really just doing the very best that they can with where they are. That's it. Just where you are in your thinking, your thought process with the way that you were raised. There's so many things that play into people's actions that you can't even be mad anymore. Like you can't even fucking be mad when you should be mad. You can't even be mad. You can't be mad. Do you know why you can't be mad? Because you start to understand people from a place of love. And again, you know that person is just doing the very best they can from where they are. That's it. They're doing the best that they can where they sit. And the end. Like, they're just doing the absolute best that they can where they sit. Like, even me, I'm just, I'm doing the best that I can. I'm getting off of the rat race. I'm just sorting back through my happiness and my life. And um, I've done a lot of things in my life that will just make a really great book. And now I'm at the chapter of my life to where I'm ready to just be happy. And that's the funniest part, like... It's kind of, it's actually the hardest chapter. And that's what I told my dad. Like the work never bothered me. Like the work doesn't bother me. The change doesn't bother me. It's the, um, it's the little void, like that connection, you know, like I just, that's what, what sucks. It's like, I know that all the change is coming, but like, I just need to sit with it. You know, I just need to sit with it and make sure that I make. Just make smart choices. I just don't want to look up in 10 more years and decide that I, you know, I don't know, just need to just be smart with it. So anyway, change is upon me once again and I'm okay with it. I'm actually excited. Like I said, I've gotten to the place to where I'd rather walk away with nothing to continue on this rat race. I want to take, I want to take my life back. I don't want to feel guilty like I said, it's never going to happen again to have to, my dad, for my dad to call me and say, Hey, I really need you to do this. Like, please. Like I, and I mean, my dad just had a heart attack last year. He's really not in the best health. My dad is trying to kind of retire. You know, I wonder how much time, you know, like you think about that. Like after your dad has a massive heart attack and has to have open heart surgery, you start to think like he's not going to be here forever. Like I'm, I'm at that point in my life too. And for me to have to tell him, like, I can't help you because I have to do all these other things. Because you know if you leave, it's going to be a fucking fight and it's a big deal and you're going to, I'm just not. I made the decision that day. Like, that was, that was really the it for me. I mean, I'm never going to tell my dad no. I'm never going to put myself in the position that if I go help my dad, it's going to put me in a bind. Because that man has done everything. You know what? 
we had nothing. Like, my dad came from fucking nothing. We had nothing. And if you all knew how hard he worked, my, by the time my sister was born, our lifestyle was so much different than when I was a child. My sister and I are 16 years apart, 15 years, almost 16 years apart. Because my dad just... But, you know, my sister said it best the other day. She's like, nobody deserves to retire more than my dad. He's never seen the ocean. Can you imagine working 60 years of your life so that the girls that you've raised, me and my sister, even my mom, you know, my mom gets to, like, she's qualified for several lifestyle vacations and stuff, and she's got to go. My dad's never gone. He's just worked. And I kind of felt that, like, nobody deserves to retire more than my dad because he deserves to get to go see the ocean. He deserves to get to just hang out with my kid. Like, my daughter thinks that he hung the fucking moon. I mean... But then I look at it and I look at how hard I'm working and then it's every day and just that I'm always constantly being pressured to do more, to do more, to do more. It's never enough. And I look at it and it's not going to be any different for me. I'm 35 and I have to fucking fight to get to go do anything and I'm just not. So that's where I am. And again, please do not read between the lines. I really don't want this gossiped about. I don't fucking want it to be tore apart. Like... Have some fucking respect for me. Even if you fucking hate me, like, just respect me enough right now to just give me some fucking space. Like, do not rejoice in this. And honestly, if you do, whatever, because the joke's kind of on you because I've never been happier, which is why I'm offline just enjoying my fucking life. I just really am grateful for the people that have, like, been brought into my life, really. I mean, I really am. And my friends. And like I said, it, today at lunch was like just, it was that moment that I just sat there and I just, I was just like in awe. I just looked at Teddy and I was like, you are such a good motherfucker, man. Like. Yeah, it's crazy. I've just, it, I've always been the one that everybody could depend on and I just never really had the people around me that I could depend on. You know, like I, I really need this. Like this is something that has to happen because, you know, this has to happen so that all of this can fall in line. And most of the time, you know, you just, people will kind of make excuses. Oh, well, when the time is right. Or, oh, well, maybe next. Nah. He said, bring them tomorrow. Yeah. So, that's my goal. My goal is to surround myself by more teddies and more Jackies. And to be the person that's, like, worthy of that. Like, I want to be the friend that's, like, deserving. You know what I mean? Like, I just, I want to be the friend that's deserving of those friends. So that... At the end of the day, I give back more than I take because I've surrounded myself by givers and I don't, I'm just shocked kind of. But all right, well now that somebody's like called me in for being a schizophrenic psycho in the parking lot of the gas station and I'm currently just killing time because I ain't got shit to do. I don't even know what to fucking do with myself. Do y'all hear me? Like. I don't even know. Like, I thought about it a minute ago. I was like, maybe I should go somewhere. I was like, well, I've got the money to do it. Why don't I just, like, like where am I going to go? I was like, oh. like, I don't know. Like, I don't know what to do. Like, if I didn't have, like, a Reiki appointment at 9 o'clock in the morning, and then, like, um, my hair appointment at, like, 1 tomorrow, I probably would just, like, get in my car and, like, go, like, go, because... My child is with my mom for another week and right now I currently for the first time in my life like I don't have to ask permission to do shit like if I just want to fucking like go for like two or three days and like nobody gets to tell me no <laughs> did you guys listen to the snaps the other day when Jackie and I oh god I have them saved I will repost them I'll repost them on my reel for those of you who didn't get to see them they were quite they were they were quite great they really were show yeah all right you guys I'm gonna get off here before the police get called on me again <laughs> only in the middle of nowhere I think everybody around where I live is used to it by now but all right well I love you guys so love and light and don't forget we do have um Heather has a set of shirts and what all Heather we have shirts and caps. Um, so I really love that. And thank you so much for the suggestions. But if I'm going to be visiting national parks, it will be alone. 
because that is where my journey is headed. So thank you. I guess maybe I was not clear on that. Oh, Sage, I did that the other day. I went on a Sunday drive the other day and I just fucking drove and drove and drove. It was so good for me. Yeah. But you know, I have like a little OCD and I've got some ADHD and like my brain gets to... Yeah. I just, today when I was talking to, you know, my therapist for a second, like we just had that conversation. I didn't realize, you know, some people's depression and anxiety is situational and so you can change it. Other people's is clinical and it's different. So I guess I'm just grateful that mine is situational and I can get a get control on it and just get past it fast and move on. And, but, but I'm excited to share with you guys some of the photos I took. They're really, I mean, they're really, they're cool. Like even I think they're cool. You know what I mean? Like normally I'm kind of hard on myself about stuff. Like I try to, like I said, it's been cool to like step back and not be a perfectionist to just be like, you know what? These are fucking badass. Like, and to just be proud of it instead of being like, well, I wish I would have done because that was me like a year ago. But that's a trauma response for everything that I do in my life, not being good enough for the people around me who I value their opinion. You know, like if I value your opinion and it's always not quite good enough and there's never like a, hey, good job, like, hey, you know, whatever. At that point, you kind of get to where you get really hard on yourself, you know, like everything's and I'm just not doing that. I'm not fucking doing that with the rest of my life. I'm not. So, I'm in yoga pants and vans and a t-shirt and just living my best life, but I will tell you, I, Heather, I don't know why you didn't do these. Heather, why didn't you think of these? I fucking love it. The pink one is the best one. But you guys know by now, like, this just screams me, like, am I the, I'm just, I'm just mad that Heather didn't think of them. Heather, get on the ball. You're slacking. You're slacking. All right, love and light. I'll see you guys soon. How soon? I don't know. I mean, I'll be live. I'm gonna video some ponies. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my Frisians for sale. Um, I am gonna put all of my Frisians for sale. The rest of my barrel horses for sale. Um, I probably will keep Squirt. I need to put Spider for sale. So there's a lot that need to go for sale and go for sale here pretty fast. And I'm just gonna kind of put all that money that's kind of the stuff that's mine, not, it's not joint property. That's, those are things that belong to me. And um, as I kind of liquidate through that though, it'll just give me the freedom to move forward in my business the way that I choose to, so. Right, Tinley? I miss her so much. I'm kind of actually about ready to go get her, but I just have shit I need to be doing. So, I love y'all. Bye, you guys. <laughs>